Hi, everybody. So for the next several days, we're going to be looking at this categorical data or qualitative data and looking at different ways that we would graph this particular type of data. So displaying distributions with graphs. We'll be doing a lot of Khan Academy um, for this section, uh, also a few Google Forms in there. But the main idea is understanding how to create these graphs, what goes into a data display, why do we make data displays, and the idea that these three types of graphs, pictographs, bar graphs, and pie charts, these are best used for categorical data. So this is the way that we display things that is not numerical. Now the pictograph is the one that you're going to be working on today using Khan Academy. And that is the graph in the upper left corner here, how do children travel to school? And the reason it's called a pictograph is, well, because it uses pictures to represent the number of students. So we have an x-axis here, the horizontal axis that has the number of children. And along the y-axis is the vertical axis, and it's how they get to school. So instead of just using a bar or something, they've got cars to represent the number of children that go to school by car. So we can see that there's four of them here. So that's a pictograph. And then on the right, you have the reasons for travel, which is a bar graph. Now, this bar graph is drawn horizontally, but bar graphs can also be drawn vertically. So you can you can do them lots of different ways. And there are lots of websites that will let you create bar graphs. So one day during during this whole portion of this unit, I'm going to have you just doing a little bit of internet searching and trying to find um, different websites that will allow you to create graphs. And some are super easy to use. And um, yeah, so they, they'll help you a lot. Now this one, you can see that there's percents in there. So 16% of people travel to go shopping. That 16% is what's called a relative frequency if we do it in percents. If we had counts there, like if it said um, 20 people said that they travel for shopping, that would be a frequency or a count. So we have different types of bar graphs, relative frequency, frequency, and it's just a matter of if you're using counts or percents. And then the bottom one is, of course, a pie chart. And this is the always in percents. So what we're doing is we're taking 100%, which is everybody, and then splitting it up into pieces of the pie by percent. So we can see here that that blue piece of the pie is the most popular. So the main issues for the traveling public would be the price of travel. 36% <clears throat> of people said that was a main issue for them. Now the Next thing I want to talk about is data displays in general, and this is going to apply for all data displays, the top two bullets here, no matter what, any kind of graph we're making. And once we get to quantitative data, numerical data, we will be talking about a lot of different types of graphs. Every data display needs a title, always, always, always. Every data display has to have the axes clearly labeled. So you should be able to if you create a graph on paper or even you know online or something, if you do it digitally with some kind of software, if you create a graph of something and pass it off to somebody else, a friend or somebody in your household, they should know exactly what they're looking at. If they have any questions like, what does this mean or what does that mean, then you're not doing it right. So data displays need to be crystal clear. Now with bar graphs, which is you'll be looking at um, tomorrow, the bars should all be the same width, but they're not attached. You'll see later when we do histograms, they will be attached. And I had explained this earlier that you can use counts or percents on the y-axis. So just pay attention to questions. If something says create a relative frequency bar graph, that means use percents. So take your your counts, the number of people that do something, and divide it by the total, that will convert that into a percent. So let me give you an example of that in case somebody's not understanding that. So actually, I didn't mean to zoom in there. Let me just undo that. Okay, technical difficulties here. Let me get back to where I was, back here. All right, so what I'm going to do is just put a text box in here so you know what I mean about relative frequencies and how to convert things to percents. So relative, let me make that a little bit bigger. 
Okay. Relative frequency, that means percent. So let's say I told you that there were 100 people were asked their favorite pet. And let's say that 70 said dog. And that is a count. So 70, this is a frequency. That's the number of people that said dog. If I want the relative frequency, in order to turn something into a percent, I'm going to take the count, which is the frequency, and I'm going to divide it by the total number of people. And then once I get that answer, so I'll get 70 divided by 100, and to turn it into a percent, I'll then multiply by 100. So 70 out of 100 is 0 0.70. You can just do this on a basic calculator, even your phone. And if I do 0.7 times 100, that is my relative frequency. So 70% of the people said dog. And that's going to come up quite a bit in this class. So I just wanted to make sure that I cover that now. Okay, so this is a pretty short video, um, just these two things. So today you're going to be working in Khan Academy. Watch the Sal Khan video on pictographs and then answer the assignment. And then after in the days following, you'll be working on bar graphs and pie charts. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Bye.